because th those are all atomized and broken up. <clears throat> We're on the main satellite that hits all the TV stations in northern Mexico, the United States, and Canada so that you can call up your local UHF or VHF or cable system and say, please carry the Alex Jones show. There's four hours of it during the day, radio slash TV, but it's a full TV production. And then there's the produced one-hour show at night. Sometimes it's live, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's taped to air. It'll be live tomorrow. And a lot of these program directors, station owners, or station managers are listeners. That's why we're going to be hitting, but you're going to also be hitting, with brochures, info, links to the websites, all of it, everybody at a TV station. Because you don't know who the key person is at that TV station. Listen, I can walk into a small town TV station or a big city cable station and there'll be some manager comes running down to meet me and going, yeah, you ought to put your show on satellite. We'd pick it up. Oh, yeah, we'd at least put it on the weekend or something. See how it went. Here, you know, I want you to, here's some cards. You know, call us. I got a buddy who does satellites. You ought to be, I mean, so many cable and TV stations, and I'm not going to get into this now. I'm going to go to your calls. Just skip another break. We're doing this because about four or five years ago, we were starting the nightly news that was going to be internet-based, subscriber base, but then be deployed and delivered uh, to a bunch of free platforms the next day so our subscribers were just paying so we could produce this and have the bandwidth and so they could see it when it first aired or when it was live. And it's been incredibly successful. Hundreds of millions of people have seen the nightly news conservatively in North America alone. But it was station managers, owners, and program directors reaching out time and time again and saying, will you please put it on a satellite or put it on one of these server systems? So we can download it. And then I'd say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to think about doing that. But I was so busy with other stuff, they'd call back in a year going, listen, just I'll send a contract over that I can carry it or just send me back something I can air it whenever I want, free to air, and I'll put you on. And so suddenly over 200 of these letters and calls came in, and I know over 100 stations, TV, UHF, VHF, cable, some small towns, some big cities. I mean, we're on basic cable for now what? Two years in, in Houston, we've got an interview with the owner of it, it's a, who is the inventor of internet video. Like, when you see 2001 Space Odyssey, he's on a space station talking to his daughter, this guy had invented that and had the government using it before it was even in science fiction movies. Never done an interview. Best friends with Ron Paul, basically. He's the guy that put up the Ron Paul channel. He put us on before Paul, and then he's like, we're not doing it quick enough, so he went to Paul and set it all up, which I absolutely love. That's being heard on TV, radio, all over the country, being picked up all over the place, hundreds of stations. And the guy didn't even want to be known, doesn't want any attention, doesn't want to be appreciated. He was involved in like the 60s, fighting the Federal Reserve, the New World Order. I mean, these are the type of folks that are just all over the country, amazing people. And so we used to send him a high high def feed so they would carry it or they download it and then air it the next day well not anymore not for about a month we've been on the big satellite they love it it's working real well at our studios the satellite stuff's on right now and now we just got to go through all the contacts all the people get them hooked up get it going it's very very exciting we've got a lot of stuff like that coming up and i don't want to say i'm a coward but i am sick of the responsibility it, it, it you know but at the same time, I'm, I'm going to go to the next level and push it in the globalist faces because I'm not going to sit on my hands. I'm not going to use half measures. I'm going to go all out Americana style to really give these people a run for their money. And it doesn't mean we're going to save the country or the world or you are. But the spirit of resistance, the spirit of standing up will cause chain reactions that will end up bringing the tyranny down in the end. And so you'll have a heavily produced, you know, nice one-hour transmission that I think will get picked up by a lot of places. And then you're going to have this fire-breathing transmission with all the guests, the clips, the rest of it, that'll also be very popular. Because imagine you're out there in UHF or VHF or cable land, and you're tuning through the channels, and you come across this guy, for whatever reason, they stop, they watch. When I was first on Access TV 20 years ago, about a year into it, it was in the paper, the Austin American Statesman, that the cable company wanted to know, and they had bought a Nielsen's monitoring system.
to look at access television in an argument to get rid of it. And there was a show that was number one in the entire cable spectrum, one and a half hours a week. And you know what show that was? This one right here. A guy running his own show at that time in, a, in the control room, running tapes, playing clips, talking to the camera with the lights all blown out, where if I had one zit on my head, you could see it when I was 22 years old. I wasn't zit face, but when I got one, sometimes it looked like hell. I didn't even wear makeup, still don't today. I'm not bragging and saying I'm something special, but in a bare knuckles fight, I will annihilate the competition. And that's known. I mean, I've gotten the top ratings in Austin twice. I've, I've had success. People want this. We've, we've beaten Limbaugh. I never wanted this time slot. I was told, you will take this time slot or you're not going to be on GCN. And I said, I want to be on at night. And they said, that's not when hardcore political talk's on. No one goes up against Limbaugh. You'll actually get stations if you go up against him. And, man, I was on like 30 stations then at night. I went on. I had 120 stations within a year. My, listen, Michael Trudeau, not Kevin Trudeau, Michael Trudeau, who, who left a long time ago, GCN, he was like a Republican strategist and a bunch of other stuff, smart guy. He was right. Over 100 and something stations just by doing that within a year or so. <laughs> then... He was a sweetheart, but man, when I started attacking George W. Bush and everything else, uh, after 9-11, he, he resigned. I ought to get him on as a guest sometime. But he resigned. He said, I've never seen anybody lose 70% of their stations and not stop it. And he goes, I don't believe they blew up those towers. I don't believe the government's involved. And really, I want to punch you in the nose, man, that you're doing that. But Ted Anderson said, hey, it's the First Amendment. He can do it. That's how good GCN is. It's mom and pop. It's whatever you want to call it, but they don't censor you. They don't control you. And But they sat there and watched my radio empire at 27 years old burn down in front of them. But you know what? I felt really good in all that because I don't care about being on all those stations. I'm on more than that now because the facts are I didn't say George Bush put bombs in the building as the media said I did. Just like I didn't say Jade Helm was an imminent takeover. I said our government, bare minimum, ordered NORAD to stand down and that the Saudi Arabians were involved, not Iraq, and that there was an inside job at some level. That's now in the 9-11 report and they've redacted it. That's on record. I'm right, period. Because here's the deal. I'm not somebody special. Let me tell you something. When I think about lying to people on something big like that, when I think about knowing that Criminals in our government, bare minimum, allowed that to happen to take our liberties and attack sovereign countries that didn't deserve it. Saudi Arabia's enemy. I feared for my soul at that very point. And it's the strongest instinct you can have. It's beyond instinct to be afraid of God. I just can't do it. I can't know something's true and then lie to people. And that is my greatest strength, and that's your greatest strength, is to stop caring what they think. Stop caring what happens to you. you got to do the right thing. It's got to be done. And that doesn't mean if you were some enemy country and, and, and they ch at a checkpoint, they asked if you were part of you know, the Libertarian Party or something, that you wouldn't lie and go, no, I'm a communist comrade. I'd lie in a minute in that situation. Like the J Jewish spies in the Bible going in, you know, are you with the, uh, are you with the Jews? And, well, no, we're certainly not there, you know. Or in World War II behind enemy lines. No, you're not going to act like you're not like you're French, not American. You're going to get killed. I'm not saying that I haven't lied at Bohemian Grove to say, oh, I'm a member or I'm a guest. Yeah, here's the place I'm staying to get the intel. But I don't lie on big, real issues that affect anybody else. Do you understand? Because here's the deal. I will lie when my spirit says that's not a lie. Because it's got to be done to expose evil in a certain situation that doesn't hurt anybody. That's different. I do it very rarely, and I, 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 I soul search over all of it. But when you hear me up here on air, I say things that are politically incorrect. I say things that I don't even want to say, but I say it because I know it's true. And that's the commitment you'll get. And I guarantee you, it's already happened. We're going to end up on hundreds and hundreds of UHF, VHF stations, and cable stations. Hundreds. If you spread the word about the transmission, all the info we're going to be putting out tomorrow and in the next few weeks is very exciting.
and I haven't really talked about it on air because we've just been so busy with other things and running everything and getting this ready, but it's a very epic time to be alive and to be involved. Your phone call straight ahead, then Joe Biggs is going to be joining us uh, in studio. But 28-hour transmission tomorrow kicks off at 11 a.m. Central, Infowars.com forward slash show. Please send the link to friends and family. We'll be back. Joe Biggs is with me, but don't worry, callers. I know I've been ranting, so I made you hold. I apologize. We will go to Joe Biggs and get his analysis here in a few minutes after I've taken some of the callers that have been holding longest. But Joe hosts the show, co-hosts the show. He can take your calls and converse with you as well. Joe Biggs went to see the Donald for 90 minutes in a packed house yesterday up in Big D, my uh, hometown. And he's here to break down what he saw, and he's got some video clips as well. The news websites are Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We have a 28-hour transmission that Joe will be hosting some of uh, coming up tomorrow. And we'll be taking your calls as well. And we've got a whole bunch of mini documentaries that are really well done, really powerful, breaking stuff tomorrow, you name it. The free feed is at Infowars.com forward slash show. Now, we're, we're, we're normally five hours live a day, but the four hours of radio and the nightly news, but it's going to be 28 hours interspersed with as many documentaries and things uh, coming up tomorrow, kickoff 11 a.m. Central. And again, I should have been hyping this beforehand. We're too busy getting it ready to do that. So uh, it's uh, no hype. It's all bite, ladies and gentlemen. No bark, all bite, I guess is the inside uh, baseball motto around here. It's for one of the most attacked organizations in the country. So that is all coming up right now. You've been holding Emoc from Missouri. Thanks for doing that. You're on the air. Welcome. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I wish best of luck and the wishes tomorrow for your money bomb. And I'm I'm standing in a library right now next to the Missouri flag, and it's got two bears holding up a sign that says "United We Stand, Divided We Fall." And uh, last night I watched I uh, rewatched the uh, video. American Drug War II, a cash hide story put out by uh, Sacred Cow uh, Productions. And uh, I just want to, I've, I've heard you say a, a few different things on, on cannabis. I know it's totally off topic, but I just wanted to get your hardcore down the down the earth point of view on where where cannabis should stand and if you think they're sure. going light to the, light the White House up green like they like to do with the rainbow some, sometime coming up soon here. All right, I appreciate your call. Let me try to answer that. I'm going to get Joe Big's take on it. I don't trust George Soros as far as I can throw Staten Island. Anything he's involved in is bad. He also knows marijuana legalization is big money. Remember, that's why he's involved. I am for decriminalization because I'm against giving the police state a reason to be in our lives. A lot of people use marijuana, and some studies show it's better than a lot of the you know drugs that get people to calm down. It's got a lot of uses against cancer, you know, cancer treatment, you name it people that are nauseous, glaucoma. I mean, there's hundreds of uses. It is an amazing plant, like aloe vera and a few other you know, really cool plants that do so much. So I think we should demystify it. That said, I know a lot of people that are total jellyfish, that all they do is smoke pot all day. And the new pot that's around, because I know I've smoked it, and I'm not really a pot smoker, but I mean, I really do, like the police do. I'll smoke it once a year just to test it out and see how strong it is. I mean, I've smoked pot where I can't get out of a chair for an hour. And, uh, and back when I was more of a drinking man, I'm going to drink a bottle of Jack Daniels, and you can't even tell. So let me tell you, that's some hardcore stuff right there. And do I think that's something 14-year-olds should be smoking? Absolutely not. Do I want his house SWAT team and the dog killed because of it? No. But you legalize or decriminalize it, I'm not for total legalization, that cuts out the drug gangs, the money laundering, all of it. Uh, and so I think it's a state's rights issue. I think it should be a state issue. Uh, and I just get criticized by the pro-marijuana people because I say, hey, it's got a lot of pitfalls a lot of problems. Here's what I see negative. But hey, you got a right to go buy Drano at the store and drink it. It's going to kill you. We're going to have you know DEA raiding people's houses, ban Drano. If somebody could kill themselves with it, you got people that go get spray paint and huff it, brain damaging them. I mean, I don't want them to do that. But that's just what you do. I mean, you can't stop that. And those idiots are going to do it. They do it all over the world. So I'm just a libertarian at the end of the day. Um, Joe Biggs, what's your take on the marijuana situation? Like you said, there, are, there is a lot of medical uh, uses for it. I think there's a lot of great uses for it. I think the VA should allow a lot of these soldiers with PTSD to use it because I have a lot of friends that use it, and it calms them down. Meanwhile, the VA wants to push all these prescription drugs on it, and then that's what sets them over the edge, makes them go a little crazy. Oh, yeah, they prove marijuana doesn't make you kill anybody. Prozac does. 
Yeah, that will definitely happen. Marijuana, that, I mean, that's going to have you sitting there on the couch for a little bit, you know, chilled out, 